What's going on guys? How you guys doing today? Me? I'm doing pretty good, you know? Uh, living a blessed life, having a blessed day, so there's not too much I can complain about. But what I wanted to come talk to you guys today about um, is income and how we can increase our income with the current job that we have. And I know most, most of us can, you know, get a higher wage by moving to a different job, but what I wanna talk about is how we can increase our income with the current job we have. Um, so let's get right into it, let's go. So you guys see the title, the title is increase your income by cutting your expenses. You can always cut expenses out of your life, which we can, you know, there's never a time in our life where we can't find something to cut out of it. Um, the more money you are able to save away, the more money you can invest. And that's just facts. You know, every decision I, I make, I look at it in a monetary standpoint. I look at it, how is it gonna affect my bottom line? Is this going to help me make money in the end? Um, or am I, or is this some type of play that's gonna make me lose money? So you just gotta look at the decisions you make and look at how it's going to affect you in the long run. Um, so this list right here is just, you know, just common debts that we all have, that we all pay every month. The first one we're gonna start with is Heartland Loan, Great Lakes Loan. Those are all college um, loans. Um, if you didn't go to college, great. Um, college is a scam, that's a whole nother different subject. But um, yeah, if you were lucky enough, I guess, to go to college, then you probably most likely have some loans to pay off. So um, those are something that we're always gonna have to pay until you uh, pay them off, unless they get deferred. Um, so there's not much you can really do about that. Just try to uh, pay as much as you can so you're paying less interest over time. Um, so Discover Credit Card, Chase Credit Card, Capital One Credit Card. These are all credit cards. Um, most of us have two, some have three. Uh, it just depends. But we want to get in the habit of using credit cards just as a means of building credit instead of using credit cards to pay for things that we know we can't afford. Because when you can't afford something, you start you know, getting late fees, interest builds up the longer that you're paying off that debt. So we wanna minimize the amount that we're using credit cards and when we're using them, we wanna make sure that we can pay it off. We just are using this as a means of building credit. And below that is uh, streaming services. You know, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Netflix. You know, these are all some type of streaming service that most of us have. Most Americans have some type of streaming service or they have cable TV, which you shouldn't be having cable TV. Like, come on, let's be real. Like you pay over a hundred dollars for, you know, a hundred channels and out of those hundred channels, you probably only really watch five of them. So if you want to do some type of cable, I would suggest you do uh, Sling TV, which is also a streaming platform, but they give you a little bit more control over what you're actually paying to watch. Um, so yeah, now when it comes to these streaming services, do we need all three, you know? Or can we cut back to one? Or can we cut back to two? Do we really need all three? Especially if we're not even using all three of them the same amount, you know? You may be watching a lot of Amazon Prime or maybe watching a lot of Netflix, but not watching that much Hulu. So be aware of that. Be aware of how you're actually using these services and come to the realization that, man, I'm not even using this. I might as well, you know, cancel it. Say that you were able to keep one, but cancel two. You're saving about, you know, $24, $25. Um, you know, also fits, uh, what also fits in there is HBO, Showtime, all those different streaming services. So just find ways to cut back on what you actually are watching. And um, that money that you're not spending, you know, is money that can go towards investing. So we just need to be a little bit more aware about um, how we're using those platforms. Um, same with like Adobe, which is also um, a, a service. It's a subscription service. So where you're using either, you know, Premiere Pro, Illustrator, um, Photoshop, uh, just things like that. I just picked Adobe because that's what I use. I use Adobe. Uh, you could be paying a subscription on something else. You can have a Costco membership. Uh, do you really go to Costco that much? Do you really think that you need to, you know, to pay that money every month for a membership that you're barely using? Um, so the idea is just to get um, financially aware of what you're paying every month 
all these services that you're paying to because it looks like a little when you separate each of them all. Oh, you know what I mean? Hulu's only $13.65 a month. When you separate them, it looks like a little, but if you have all three of them, you're looking at, you know what I mean, anywhere to $50. So just be aware of what you're actually using and not using. The rent, rent is something that, you know, we're all gonna have to pay. But look at this price. This price is $1,640. You're talking about $1,640. Do we really need an apartment that expensive? It's just, you know what I mean? Especially if it's just you alone, do you really need all the extra space um, do you really need to be in luxury? Uh, you can cut back, cut that down, get some type of rent. Maybe that's 1100 and that extra 500 plus, you know, is going towards investing or is going towards um, real estate investing or is going towards stock market investing, you know? So uh, find ways to cut costs. Do you really need the things that you have? Um, car note. Now with this, everybody wants to look good in whatever they're driving in. So do we really need the 2020 Mercedes Benz? Do we really need the Range Rover, the 2020 Range Rover? Nah, I don't think we really need that. Um, especially if we can't afford it. And when I say you can't afford it, that doesn't mean where you actually, actually can't afford it. But I mean, in the sense of you're barely scraping by because you made the decision to get a $350 note on a car, on a 2020 Mercedes Benz. That's also not being able to afford it. If you're barely skating by, what if an emergency happens? You barely have any money to afford whatever emergency, you know, because you're so high in cost with paying off these notes and paying off these streaming services and paying off these credit cards. So it all adds up. Um, insurance. So, you know, if you're getting a 2020 Mercedes Benz, or if you're getting, if you're leasing a car, you know, you got to pay full insurance where me personally, I don't get uh, stuck in notes. I don't like notes because I don't own the car and I end up paying more than the car's worth. So if I buy a car, it's usually going to be six years older than the current year and I'm going to pay it all out. You know, I'm not going to get stuck with the note um, because if I own a car, I can also sell it. You know, I can sell it if I want, you know, money, if I need cash right away. Uh, so it's different. Um, and with this miscellaneous, that counts for, you know, groceries, uh, going to the movies, going shopping, buying clothes and stuff like that. So th that's probably the biggest area we can actually cut out because do we really need to be going shopping all the time? Uh, do we really need the newest Prada, the newest Gucci? Do we need the Gucci slides? No, the Gucci slides costing $300. Do we really need them slides? No, we don't. So get you a nice pair of Nike slides, Adidas slides, and you're good to go. Um, you know, so we can easily cut that out. Instead of going to the movies every, you know, two times every week, we can cut that down to once a week, or we can cut it down to once every three weeks or once a month, you know? so. Um, just cut down your expenses. Look at how you're actually spending your money because it's the thing about credit cards. It's easy to swipe. It's easy to swipe where when you have physical dollars, you can actually look at it and you can look at the money going away. But when you're swiping, it's hard to connect the swiping with actual money. Just be aware that, you know, what I mean, every time you're swiping that card, you're losing money. And uh, so these are just some things that we need to look at individually and figure out what we need and what we don't need and um, what benefit is it bringing us? Is it, you know, say if I have Adobe, I use Adobe, I make videos off of Adobe or I, I um, edit photos off of Adobe. How is that helping me in the long run? Is that making me money in the long run? Well, I use Premiere Pro by Adobe to make videos for YouTube. So it's benefiting me. It, I have a cause for carrying on that type of debt. Um, because there's a such thing as good debt and bad debt. So bad debt is when you take on debt that you can't afford to pay off. So in the long run, you're accruing late fees and interest is accruing. So you're paying a lot more money than that initial uh, face value of debt that you brought on. Good debt is debt that you take on that has the potential to make money for you. So if I, if I invest in some real estate, 
So say the real estate, they want me at least to put 10% of my own money down and they, they'll lend me, you know, the, the, the 90%. They'll lend me 90% of the cash, but I have to put 10% of my money down. So I'm taking on that debt. Say it was a $100,000 rental property. I'm putting down 10,000. They're giving me 90,000. I take on that debt. Um, but that kind of debt has the potential of making money for me. So the money that I can potentially make from the property is going to be so much more than what it's costing me to have that debt. So the percentage, the rate of return is going to be higher on my profits than the cost of the interest occurring and, you know, that debt alone. So that's good debt because I can pay that debt off and I'm going to have money after I'm going to have money left over, which is going to be positive cash flow. So that's good debt. I can afford to pay that off. You know, I can afford to pay that interest. And at the same time, I'm building credit. So, you know, we just got to be smarter about how we take on debt and how we use debt. Um, rich people understand that. They understand how to manipulate the system. They know how to use debt for their benefit. So uh, we just need to start thinking that way. And if we start thinking that way, you know what I mean? We'll be much better off um, in financial success. And guys, please make a list like this. Um, I have a list of my own with my own, you know, liabilities and expenses um, just to help me keep track of when my payments do and how much I have to pay. Um, if you always paying on time, you know, it's never going to affect your credit. Your credit's always going to be in good standing, you know, paying on time. Make sure you pay on time. Credit's king. Um, but it's also good at, you know, giving yourself an understanding of what's leaving your pocket every month. Um, and if you understand what's leaving your pocket, you then understand what you can cut back on. You then can figure out what don't you need because you have it written out. You can actually look at it. So, you know, create a list like this when, with the due date, you know, and the, the amount that you have to pay off. Um, and if you do that, you're gonna be one step closer to being more, you know, financially free and more financially aware. What I want you guys to take away from this video is an understanding of how you're spending your money and is it, you know, a positive thing for you? Is it benefiting you in some way? Um, I know, granted, sometimes you spend money and it's not always going to benefit you. It's not always going to be in a situation where it's going to make you more money in the long run. You need money just to spend, you know what I mean? Because you got to feel good about the money that you earn. So you may be using it on ice cream or you may be using it to take a, a young lady out or something or maybe taking a fella out. Um, but uh, just to be more aware of in the long run of how all these costs are adding up and how is it affecting you? Or how is it affecting your bottom line? Um, is it allowing you to have you know a comfortable place at the end of the month or at the end of the month are you running out of cash and you can't wait for that next check to come in or you know at the end of the pay period are you waiting for that next check um because you're running out of money or you're living you know check to check because um that's not how i ever wanted to live i never wanted to feel like if i don't get this next check i don't know how i'm gonna make it so I became more financially aware and I paid more attention to the decisions I make and how that is going to affect um, my cash flow in the long run. Um, but I just want to thank you guys for stopping by today, um, checking out this video, and uh, I'm going to have another one coming. And I hope that you guys stay in tune with that one. So hope you guys have a blessed day, blessed month, and a blessed year. And um, always remain blessed and keep them in your corner. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out.